Now to begin with, I'm just wetting the paper halfway down. I'm not wetting it completely, I'm leaving patches that are a little bit dry. And then I just used some ultramarine blue, some Payne's grey, a little bit of lemon yellow, not too much, and a little bit of cadmium red pale. And I just very loosely blended those together. You don't want to blend them too thoroughly because you'll end up with sort of like a kind of dull muddish colour. So you want to keep the colours fresh and bright. So don't mix them too thoroughly. Then I dropped in a little bit of alizarin red. Just a little bit because it's very, very strong. A little bit goes a very long way. So just drop that in loosely, let it do its own thing. You don't need to blend it too much. And just to take it gently down as far as the, the edge of the water or the horizon. For the sea, I used viridian green with a little bit of ultramarine blue, a little bit of Payne's grey and lots of water. And again, just brush it on very loosely. You needn't cover every bit of paper. Leave some white bits. That gives more of an impression of, of the sea, the surf and the sea. So just brush that on loosely. Let that dry. And then I used Payne's Grey, a little bit of black, a little bit of raw amber to paint in the rocks. You can do any shape you like. I, you can just make the shapes up as you go along. You can have round, smooth rocks or flattish ones or tallish, any, any shape you like. I've actually done four paintings, so you, just to show you how you can do different skies for each one and slightly change the, shot, the rocks to suit your whatever, however you like to have it. So I just loosely paint in the rocks right now. I'm not too worried about the detail. So lots of Payne's Grey. I tend to use more Payne's Grey than any other colour when I'm painting these little seascapes. And you want to keep some, some parts of it quite pale. What you can do is, if you find that you do do it too dark, you can just use a wet brush to lift out the dark colours. That way you can shape it and put the shade where you want it. So don't worry if, you, if you're a little bit heavy handed to begin with, that doesn't matter because you can actually lift it out. And then I just painted in the shadows from the rocks using a little bit more of the, the colour that I mixed up for the sea with the viridian and the uh, Payne's Grey and the Ultramarine, just put some more of that on, just, just drug it on randomly. And then I painted the dark shades of the rocks, which was the Payne's Grey. Just struck it on loosely. I also put a little bit of red on the rocks just to tie in with the red in the sky just to make it look more uniform pull the picture together and then i painted a few other little bits of rocks in the middle there just little bits you don't need too much detail there's just a little bit sticking out. Underneath those I stroked in the colour of the sea again, the mixture of viridian and ultramarine. So I just stroked that in underneath just to give a little bit of um, shade and interest. And if you're not happy with your rocks, you can always go back 
back again and take out the colour with a, red, a wet brush or paint in more, more dark colours. You'll find that you'll always keep going back and, and retouching things as you, as you go along, just until you get it the way you like it. And then I put a, a darker colour under the little rocks there and some more of the Viridian mixture. I put a little bit more Viridian green in it this time to get that nice sea green colour, which seems to come out very well. Just smooth it along. You don't need to take too much time over it, just, just roughly. It's always good if you can do a little bit of um, a sort of like a little smudge under the rocks, just to give it a little bit more shadow and reflection and make it look a little bit more real. But at this stage, you don't want to put too much detail in. It's just a very, very simple painting. I've actually done uh, another three of these just to show you how you can change the sky and the rocks, the shapes of the rocks a little bit just to make it look a little bit different each time. They're great fun and try and do as many as you can because it's really, really good practice. I do tend to go back and alter the rocks quite a lot. When I look, stop and look at it, I think well, maybe that's, that could do with a bit more shape or shade or something. So just fix that as you go along. Then when you're satisfied with all that and you're happy with it, then you can just use some of the paint that you've already mixed, some of the, um, I used a little mixture of the sea colour and some of the rock colour, just mix them together to make sort of a pale grey mushy colour and I use that to paint in some seagulls. Just paint them randomly so they look like they're swooping in.